right, welcome into another episode of Cardinals Plus. It's been a little while. I'm Corey Miller here with Frank Cusimano, and the Cardinals are not leaving us short on things to talk about. But the first thing we have to talk about is the man who everybody's coming down to the ballpark to see, who does something crazy every night that we can't believe we're watching. I'm talking about Albert Pujols, who has been one of the best hitters in all of baseball in August, and that's not us homers in St. Louis saying that. That is a fact. What are you? I can't even explain what we're seeing from this guy. Yeah, we all thought this was going to happen when he went 0 for 5 on opening day and he's 42 years old <laughs> and coming off a uneventful, like, decade. Yeah. And for him to do this, it's absolutely amazing. And I think the city of St. Louis and Cardinal Nation deserves some credit here. Not that any fan is helping him hit a home run, but when you are adored and idolized and energized every time you go to the plate, that's got to have some type of role in your success and it's everybody's expecting him to do it and then he does it it's like mcguire in 98 at least that's probably i'm sure kind of what it feels like right now yeah the famous line by joe buck how much more can you give us big man yeah. and i feel like every time albert hits one like at 695 how much more can you give us not going to bog down with stats but there are some impressive ones and since this is a baseball show 393 with eight homers, 1.335 OPS in August. Against lefties overall this year, which is what he was brought in to do, looks like he could do that for years and years to come. 387 with a 1.23 OPS and 11 home runs and just 93 at-bats. He said this is it, it's the end, even if he doesn't get to 700. I believe him, I think he's done. But he could. I think he could come back and do this role for another year or two. Yeah, especially with Matt Holliday advocating on Saturday that he does, but <laughs> he won't. He's going to be one of the few athletes in sports history, John Elway, Jim Brown, Rocky Marciano, to go on, to go out on top. Uh, so the million dollar question, 694 as we're presently sitting here recording this, you think he's going to get there no problem, right? I do, but I was with a former Cardinal pitcher yesterday, and he thinks it's going to be really difficult. I mean, we think, well, all he needs is six home runs, but six home runs is still a lot of home runs here in the final month. I think the thing working towards him is the Cardinals look like they're much better than the Brewers, right? Well, maybe not much better, but they look on a better trajectory than the Brewers. They're probably going to have, hopefully, a decent lead. He's starting to get at-bats against righties, lefties. It doesn't matter because he's so hot. So the chances are definitely going to be there for sure. Yeah, you know, too, in the final six games, especially if they have it wrapped up, it's going to be like home run derby. Yeah. He's not going to be, <laughs> you know, hitting little base hits to right field. He's going to be going up like it's a home run derby to mash and mash and mash. Yeah. Uh, last thing, we've had some discussions about what that 700th ball might end up being worth. What do you think that's going to be worth for whoever It's going to be it? worth a million. We're going to get that confirmed tomorrow with Michael Barnes, who does this for a living. But he thinks because it's rarefied air, number one, and number two, we'll never see it again. I mean, let's face it, the Bonds ball is not worth anything because it's, there's steroids all over the ball. This is a steroid clean, I think, for the most part. You know, who knows for sure, but he's never been found guilty. That's why the ball is going to be worth a million yeah. bucks. That's going to be something really interesting yeah. to follow. And, and <laughs> we did a, probably a thousand stories about guys who caught McGuire's ball. So we're going to ball different. Yeah, yep. the Washington U, um, I think some type of lab technician. Mm -hmm. And he got three million for the ball. And uh, I, I think he re did he resell it? I thought he gave it back to McGuire. No, that was oh, 62. About that 70. was Forneris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 70. he worked for the Cardinals yeah. and is an attorney here in town. They gave him a red van and some season tickets, and he yeah. gave the ball back. If you got the ball, would you give it back? Listen, for about for a million for bucks. about 30 seconds, I would think about it, and then I would realize how much it would change my life to do what everybody else would do and sell it, and I probably would end yeah. up selling He's it. He's made over $300 million. I don't know if he needs the ball to add to his net <laughs> That's true. I may be wrong. Uh, Pujols chasing 700 isn't the only historic thing going on for the Cardinals this year. Paul Goldschmidt has a legitimate shot at the Triple Crown heading into September. As of our recording this, he's three behind in home runs behind Kyle Schwarber of the Phillies, tied with the Mets' Pete Alonso in RBIs, and seven points ahead of Freddie Freeman in the batting average race. We haven't seen this in the National League since Joe Medwick in the 30s. This, I think, people need to start talking about more because even though he's been a little bit cold in these last few games, I Paul Goldschmidt looks like he could do it. Yeah, I, I like the RBIs. I like the batting average. But he's not about home runs, yeah. even though it's a really prolific hitting home run season for him. And I can't picture him turning into one of these feast or famine Alonzo-type hitters to try to do this. It'd be cool, 
but he's going to have to hit some to pass Kyle Schwarber, who that's all he does. Yeah, that's true. I mean, this is the closest that anybody's seen in this town, though, for I, I don't even know how long that's had a chance at this. Yeah, now Albert's say this. probably been close. Yeah, this season he's having, Albert had like six of these. Yeah, that's true. So that, that's, a good, that's a good point. Go look at baseball reference. <laughs> And you'll yeah, see and just you'll how. you'll see the OPS. Yeah. And Albert had six of these seasons. So. Let's talk some pitching. Cardinals rotation. Uh, the additions of Montgomery and Quintana have worked out very nicely so far, especially Montgomery, who's looked like a completely different guy than he was at the Yankees. They've upped that fastball usage, and he's just been one of their best pitchers. Uh, John Mose likes to get a lot of credit going into this offseason, especially those who are going to be relied on in the playoffs, too, I believe. Yeah, I don't know if Quintana will be one of their four starters, but he's been good, and uh, he's exactly what they needed, a left-handed pitcher who will eat innings. Montgomery has been shockingly good, yeah. and he looks like he's going to be in the rotation. Now, here's the question, and this uh, you're going to get to this, but we'll get to it right well, now. Well, this is the question, yeah. so yeah, let's... Is, is Jack Flaherty, because I love the season Miles Michaelis has given us, and he is a legitimate all-star. But if you look at his last eight starts in the ERA, it's not off the charts. Now, he had two good starts in there. The Colorado start really hurt the ERA. But let me just say this. If Jack Flaherty is insane tonight and then really good Monday and has some solid starts, it would not shock me at all if game one, he's your starter. Because Jack Flaherty, at his best, gets to a level that no Cardinal starter can get to at this point in time. Now, it's a long shot. But it wouldn't shock me. If you're in that wild card series, best of three, you throw Wayno first, and then what do you I don't even know if you do that. If, really? If, well, if you're at home, yeah, because you'd have all three games at home. Yeah. You're right. As long as you pitch Wainwright at home, I have no problem with him starting game one. But I'm telling you, Flaherty, from being a pitcher who's been in the minor leagues for most of the season, yeah. he would have. He's the, he's the wild card in this yeah, whole situation. And he makes you scary, yep. Well, going forward, we saw Dakota Hudson last night. Andre Pallante was great, but they moved him out of there and into the bullpen. What do you think they do with that back end? They slot Jack in and just go with the five-man rotation and Hudson's out? Or what's your gut feeling there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I sincerely doubt if Dakota Hudson is going to get another start this season. Yeah. If he does, you got to question, you know, the mindset of the manager. <laughs> i got to tell you, um, Jake Woodford, if you yeah. don't start Flaherty, should get the start. He and his 2.1 ERA. I mean, I'm starting to wonder, did – did he do something disrespectful to the general manager or to the manager? I mean, this guy, of all the guys on this, in this organization, should have the biggest beef because all he does is get people out. That's a good point. Woodford's been very good and doesn't, get the, doesn't have like, the name cachet value of some of these other guys, so maybe he's not getting as many chances as his performance would dictate he should. Uh, let's talk a little lineup here. Since uh, Lars Newtbar and Brendan Donovan have been moved to the top of the lineup against righties, the lineup has looked great. Nars Nupar has come out of nowhere, it seemed. This is a guy who's bouncing back and forth between Memphis and St. Louis all season long, and it looked like he might just stay in Memphis. He's come back. They've given him a spot in the outfield after the Harrison Bader trade and injury. He needs to run with it. Yeah, I don't know what's complicated about filling out the one and two slots in the car to order. I mean, there's two things you know for sure. You have good red Camus wine with a great steak, <laughs> And you lead off, if you're the Cardinals, with Newt Barr and Donovan. No matter the pitcher. Yeah, if, until proven otherwise. If Donovan stops getting on base, then get him out of the lineup or drop him down. If Newt Barr stops getting on base, get him out of the lineup or push him down. But until proven otherwise, you lead those guys. And they're not going to do it tonight in Cincinnati. Yeah. But I would do it regardless of the pitcher. A guy who's struggling a little bit, though, is Dylan Carlson. And he's had a weird up-and-down season the whole time. What would you do with him right now? He makes your outfield defense better, but he's not giving you anything offensively. Yeah, I have no problem playing Tyler O'Neill in center and, you know, going with the left-handed hitters um, at, in left field and right field from time to time. Well, New Park for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, um, he's a good player. He's, he's taken a step back this year. I think he's going to be fine, but I have no problem with him sitting from time to time. Yeah. Last one. Tough one for people, a lot of people in St. Louis. What do you do with the catching spot? Gatter Molina has not had a hit since he's come back from Puerto Rico. Andrew Kisner has had a great month of August and looks very comfortable at the plate right now. You play Yachty, of course, when Wainwright's on the mound, but how do you manage that catching spot right well, now? Well, if Kisner, and it wasn't just August, he hit yeah. well in July, yep. hit 280. If he hits well in September, then in the postseason, 
Yachty gets the Wayno start, but Kisner gets everything else. That's going to be really fascinating. Yeah, uh, but boy, I'm telling you, the, what Kisner is doing right now is amazing. Yeah, he's and been great. Here's this. Here's the stat as we speak, as we tape. Yachty is 0 for 20 since he lifted the basketball trophy. <laughs> oh boy! All right, playoff feel. We talked a little bit about this as we're sitting here, five and a half up on the Brewers, about to head into September. Do you, do you breathe out yet? Do you exhale, or do you think the Brewers can still make a run here at the division? Oh yeah, I wouldn't count my chickens before they're hatched. I think they're going to win the division. It'd be cool if they could win it, you know, like Secretary de Belmont, you know, just blowing the Brewers off the field. But I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. I think we're going to be playing serious competitive baseball at the end of September, maybe early October. I agree with you. Last thing, actually, here. I saw a lot of highlights from Mets Old Timers Day. They brought everybody they could think of back, it seemed like, and it looked like a lot of fun. Why don't the Cardinals do that? They have yeah. the roster of fan favorites and legends they could bring back. You know, the fans would eat it up. It seems like a no-brainer to me. Yeah, I remember as a kid going to Old Timers games at Bush Stadium. Can you imagine, like, the ovation, like, a guy like Rick Ankiel would get oh my gosh. when he hits a 400-foot home run, which you probably <laughs> he, he can probably do very easily? <laughs> Yeah, it's a great idea. Left side of the infield of Scott Rowland and Ozzie Smith. I mean, people would eat this up. Yeah, uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, I see Rowland playing. I, I'm, I'm going to take it upon myself for a one-man uh, campaign to get this back because I just want to go see this happen. Good luck with that. I've been trying to get Slew and Mizzou together, and nobody's <laughs> listening to me there. All right, I'll try my best. Can we thank Jacob Kirk, who's done a wonderful job orchestrating, <laughs> conducting, and directing this? Shout out to Jacob for yes. sure over there. He's the master. All right, that'll do it for this episode of Cardinals Plus. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.